Our big focus. Well, the U.S.-Iran tensions in West Asia seem to have reached a tipping point. Iran's top general, Qasem Soleimani, has been killed by the United States in a rocket strike near the Baghdad airport. The entire region is on an edge. And the fallout from this high-profile assassination can already be seen. The U.S. Embassy in Iraq has urged all American citizens to leave the country immediately. They have been asked to depart via air or land. The embassy is on high alert, expecting a hostile reaction to the strikes. France has asked its citizens in Iran to stay away from public gatherings and refrain from taking photographs in public. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini has declared a three-day mourning over Soleimani's death and vowed to exact severe revenge on the U.S. He has said that the killing will double the motivation of his countrymen's resistance against the U.S. Iran has also summoned the Swiss envoy and expressed displeasure over the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Switzerland, remember, represents the U.S. interests in Iran. Now, President Rouhani has said that Iran and the free nations will avenge the death of the commander. He uh, said Iran is more determined to resist the United States after this killing. Tehran's top security body has called for an urgent meeting to take stock of the current situation. Soleimani was one of the most powerful men in Iran and there are already indications that his death will not be uh, will not go unavenged, obviously. A White, a White House statement, meanwhile, said that the strike was ordered by President Trump as a defensive act to protect the lives of American personnel abroad. The Quds Force, headed by Soleimani, is in fact a U.S.-designated foreign terrorist organization. The U.S. has accused Soleimani of plotting attacks on American diplomats and service members deployed across Iraq. And three Katyusha rockets were fired at a convoy after cars near the airport uh, shortly after midnight. The pro-Iranian Shia militant group Popular Mobilization Forces confirmed that five of its members and two special guests were killed in the strike. Now, caught in the crossfire between Iran and the United States is Iraq. Keep in mind that Soleimani was killed by the United States in Iraq. Listen in to some Iraqi protesters reacting to the killing of General Soleimani. America, Iran, and we're joining us to talk a little bit more about the implications of this assassination are uh, Lawrence Sellin, retired U.S. Army colonel, and who is live with us from Montana, the United States, and Mayor Javed Anfar, uh, Iranian-Israeli Middle East analyst, who is also live with us from Tel Aviv. Uh, Lawrence Sellin, uh, Sellin, if I can come to you first, what uh, was the thinking really here with the Trump administration? Obviously, uh, there are going to be wide-ranging implications of this uh, attack and killing of General Soleimani, and the Americans would expect some sort of retaliation. Well, uh, look, uh, General Soleimani uh, was caught at the scene of the crime. He was not in his living room in Tehran watching television. He was in Iraq orchestrating attacks against American facilities and personnel. He made himself a target. Now, no one should shed a tear for Soleimani. He is responsible for the deaths of thousands. He worked with the most notorious terrorist groups on the planet, Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad. Now, I think going forward, it's going to be a matter of who blinks first, the United States or the Iranians. And I think the Iranians would be making a big mistake if they think President Trump is going to blink. Right. So you obviously think at this point that uh, we'll have to see who blinks first and it obviously will have to be Iran, even though Iran has said that they will avenge his death. What are the possible scenarios, Javed Anfar, that may uh, pan out over the next couple of weeks, uh, given uh, that uh, General Soleimani was not just anybody in Iran, he was uh, the second most important person possibly in Iran? Um, well, one of the likeliest scenarios is that the Iranians will attack one of the U.S. allies in the region, especially the Saudis. Um, I think uh, if I were in Riyadh, I would worry about uh, such a scenario. 
Um, whether they will attack American forces, well, you know, uh, I'm no fan of Mr. Trump, but I would say he has now changed the rule, uh, rules of the game in Iraq now. Uh, the Iranians, for the first time perhaps after ever since the, since the 2003 uh, invasion of Iraq by U.S., which opened the hands of Iran, the Iranians realize now that they, any action against the U.S. Uh, will now carry a very heavy cost. So I think they'll be very careful about how they will address uh, the U.S. forces and, uh, and to attack them. So I would say, you know, uh, perhaps uh, the Saudis could pay a price or we could see uh, attacks against tankers uh, uh, in the Persian Gulf. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, just to go back to Lauren Selin now, the fact here is that uh, he was killed in, uh, you know, in Iraq. And the Iraqi Prime Minister, of course, has also spoken about this. And he seems to be quite unhappy. Uh, the Iraqi President, I beg your pardon, who was called for restraint. He's also believed to be angry with the, with the U.S. attack uh, on the deputy head of Iran's back Shia paramilitary forces, who was also killed in this attack as well. Uh, Iraq is a critical ally for the U.S. in this region. Uh, how do you think the Americans are going to assuage their concerns? Well, I, I think the the policy of the United States will probably not change very much uh, in Iraq. I I think we have to remember that uh, Iraq is not is made up not just of, of Shiites. It is also composed of uh, Sunni Arabs and the Kurds, and they will have a, a vote in this. I think you've seen some of the scenes. Uh, inside Iraq, uh, where Iraqis were celebrating the death of Soleimani. And we have to recall, just a few weeks ago, the Iraqis themselves were protesting against what they considered undue influence by Iran in, in Iraq. So I think there's a lot of opposition to uh, 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 Iran uh, becoming dominant in the region, especially from these uh, groups within uh, Iraq, the Sunnis and the Kurds. Right. And Javid Anfar, now Russia has of course warned of grave consequences of the U.S. attack. And uh, what role do you think that other countries and nations like China, Russia, uh, you know, uh, and other Middle Eastern countries can play at this point I I of time uh, in some sort of mediation or some sort of negotiation, not in the immediate future, but going forward? None. I, I don't see President Trump trusting the Russians. I don't uh, see President Trump trusting the Chinese. Each one of those countries have got their own interests. Their interests do not overlap with the interests of the United States in Iraq. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Russians are worried that, you know, they were hoping that the Americans would quietly leave the region. Um, I don't think that's going to happen now. Um, and uh, I think uh, what we are, uh, as, as, uh, as the general said in previously, uh, you know, we have to see who blinks first. I think we have to see Iran's response to this. But, uh, you know, the rules of the game have changed. And, and, and in Iraq, it's now up to the Iraqis to decide their own future. I don't think the Iraqis want any country to interfere in their affairs. But I think they were, after the departure of U.S. forces, uh, majority of the U.S. forces about five years ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they see the hands of President, uh, Mr. Soleimani, who was a foreigner in Iraq. And now they, you know, uh, there will be, a noticeable part of Iraq, maybe, you know, at least half of Iraq, I think, or maybe even less, even 40 percent of Iraq who are happy that he's gone. And that's not a number that you can ignore. OK. Lauren Selen, now Donald Trump has tweeted this evening that Iran who has never won a war and he is now, uh, is he now hinting at a possibility of war that America can ill afford at this moment, possibly, but also going into this attack, did America factor in a major escalation to the point of war, uh, even war with Iran? No, I, I don't think this will escalate into a war. I think uh, obviously uh, tensions will increase uh, I, I think the Iranians will attempt uh, some type of retaliation. As your other guest pointed out, it may be against Saudi Arabia or, or uh, shipping in the Persian Gulf. Uh, there may be attacks on, on uh, U.S. allies. I, I, do, I don't see a scenario where there's going to be a major Iranian attack against U.S. forces, which would uh, probably precip precipitate a major conflict. 
Right, but uh, but Lawrence, and what about uh, you know the oil routes in the immediate future? Do you see any impact on uh, on the oil routes in the Strait of Hormuz, given the fact that we've seen attacks in the past as well, and of course the markets have reacted already to the death of General Soleimani? Well, I think you're right about all those points. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the Strait of Hormuz is, is a choke point. And I think the Iranians have traditionally, over many, many years, have used uh, that choke point, uh, at least attempted to use that choke point to their advantage. I, I fully expect them to, to uh, do it again. Okay, fair enough. Well, we will have to see how this entire issue pans out. But Lauren Selin and Mir Javed Anfar, thanks very much indeed for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this very, very important political development and, of course, which has global implications for, uh, for countries all across the world.